morning, everybody. Let me get situated here. I know we have a, a great number of people on Zoom, so hence the mic here and this mic. Um, but good morning, everybody. Good morning. So I'm usually on the other side of that camera filming our talks. And I can tell you right now, it's this is like exponentially more terrifying being on this side, but that's OK because I love Creative Mornings a lot. I've been part of Creative Mornings for about eight years. I started going in San Diego when I lived there um, about five or six years ago, started going eight years ago, I should say. And I've always gotten something out of Creative Mornings talks. I've met people, I've been inspired by people, um, I've learned things, I've had crushes on people at Creative Mornings. So I always get something out of it. And I thought when the opportunity came up to uh, speak today, I said, why not? It's a way to give back. And what I can say is I'm going to give you three things today to take away. One, you're going to meet somebody. Two, you're going to learn something. And three, you're going to make something. And maybe four, you'll have a crush by the end of this. Just kidding. Um, but really quickly, I'm not going to waste any of your time. So what I want you to do really quickly, 15 seconds, turn to your neighbor introduce yourself and tell that person where you're from still. real fast and if you're on zoom say hello on the chat and introduce yourself all right. That was painless. We got one of three things out of the way. Does that feel good? Cool. All right. How many Phoenix natives do we have in the house? Yes, yes, yes. All right. We got a handful of us. That's awesome. Well, as you know, the theme this month is native. And uh, when I was trying to think about what I was going to talk about today, uh, obviously, I think the natural thing to do is look up the definition. Uh, Raquel read the great descriptor description that HQ put out, but I needed to find what would work for me, what would resonate with me. And I love the simple root of the word native is born, to be born. And uh, the lowest hanging fruit go. is I'm a Phoenix native. I was actually... Named after that street sign you see right there. Thanks to my parents who are right there. Um, super original, I know. But yeah, I'm a Phoenix native, so I, I know I could talk about that. The second thing is I consider myself a creative native, if you will. I'm an ideas person. I love coming up with concepts, ideas, using my imagination. Um, my, my brand, my company right now is called Wild Ideas Work, which I'm going to share more about that. Um, but I, I really am up here to tell you today that nobody should be afraid of being creative and nobody should be afraid of sharing their ideas and bringing their ideas into the world because when you do that, it expresses who you are. And for me, some of the ideas I brought to life throughout my personal and professional life have brought me on the journey that I'm on today. And I probably wouldn't be standing up here if it weren't for some of those good ideas and maybe not so good ideas. So I'm going to share some more about that. And then lastly, Raquel mentioned Stray Native, which is a social group that my best friend, Daniel, who's back there, he and I started it last year. And it's a way for kind of like Creative Mornings, creative individuals to get together. We do different events around the Valley. And it's really a way to meet other creative people in Phoenix. And it was my way of when I came back to Phoenix a couple of years ago, I needed community. And so... In order to do that, yes, Creative Mornings is awesome, but I needed more than that. So we started Stray Native, and I'll share more about that. Um, so before I talk all about me and, and yammer on about me, I think it's definitely worth giving a shout out to the true natives of our area of Phoenix. Um, the true natives being the Hohokam civilization that existed here 2,000 years ago. Uh, they were the first... Um, peoples to settle here in Phoenix. And I bring them up for a 
couple reasons. One, obviously, we we definitely need to honor the native and indig indigenous peoples who existed here long before us. But I think it's really cool to mention the Hohokam people for one specific reason, and it was a very creative idea that they came up with so that they could live and thrive here in Phoenix. So for my Phoenix native friends, I'm sure you all know this, but who can tell me the really creative idea that they came up with to be able to live here? The canal system, yes, exactly. So like 2000 years ago, the Hohokam people came here or they, they basically um, arrived here from Mexico. They um, immigrated up and they didn't have what here? Water, exactly. So they figured out a way to dig over 100 and I think 35 miles of canals throughout the Phoenix area. And the canals that we have today were the descendants of those original canals. So if you're if you bike the canals, if you run the canals, if you go to Oso for beers, those canals, thank you. And not just the canals, but the canals enabled them to uh, settle here and grow crops and live here. And we can argue, I can argue that the Phoenix that we know today wouldn't look the way it does if it weren't for the Hohokam people, because after they were here, the original settlers who showed up saw those canals, saw the potential in the canals, knew that we wouldn't be able to live here if it weren't for those canals. They rebuilt them and eventually, and those, those original settlers who rebuilt the canals created, they were the ones who founded what is Phoenix, named it Phoenix. They were the ones who built the canals and restarted the city that is called Phoenix because they call it Phoenix. It rose from the ashes from the original civilization of the Hohokam. So anyway, shout out to them. Um, and if you want more information on the native and indigenous peoples who lived here before us, I'm definitely not the uh, knowledge source for that, but there's so much information online. The University of Arizona, my alma mater, Bear Down, uh, they have a great website and resources on that. They have a really cool interactive map that you can go on and click, put in your zip code, and you can find out the indigenous peoples who live wherever you live. Or like if you're from a different part of the country, you can find out those tribes and peoples who live there. So it's really cool. So anyway, I'm so happy that I don't have, and I didn't have to put together a slide presentation because I did that for too long in my last, uh, my last, my past lifetime. And so this is what you get today. It's my box of wonders. Um, ah, cool. And I'm gonna share my story my 39 years on this planet in a series of ideas that have taken me on the journey that I've been on. And uh, starting with being a kid here in Phoenix during the summers, you basically had one of two things that you could be doing in the summers. You're either at Sunsplash or Big Surf, rest in peace, Big Surf, right? Um, you're either in the pool or you were inside. And growing up, I was either swimming or I was indoors watching Nickelodeon or I was drawing and drawing and, and making and being creative. That was definitely one of my favorite things doing growing up. And uh, you get to see here some of my early masterpieces, <laughs> the, the cactus. I'm going to pass these around so you guys can see. Uh, but some of my early creations were, you know, just being out there and, and drawing the bubble gum book, uh, really creative. And then I eventually evolved to uh, some hardcover <laughs> masterpieces here. We got the haunted court and where's the Arizona flag? So kind of like a choose your own adventure. Where's Waldo? But this is, this is the stuff I loved and I'm sure I'm not the only one. It was I just remember making those and loving it and making those things. And I also love to make things for people, the people in my life I loved. The golden rolling pin was for my grandma. Uh, she was a great cook. So I made her this trophy and I'm glad that she kept it. Pass that on. Um, and yeah, so being a kid here in Phoenix, Creativity was kind of my thing during the summers, being indoors. 
And I eventually went down to University of Arizona, like I mentioned, studied marketing and media arts, fell in love with TV and video, and uh, did some really cool and fun stuff for our on-campus TV station called UATV. Did anyone go to U of A here? Yeah, bear down. All right. This right here, this is a relic. It is a DVD of a crib style show my friend Brewster and I produced called Dorm Life, where we'd go around and interview people and have them show us their dorm room decorations. So I don't have a DVD player, but it's real. Um, but getting to be creative in addition to studying was really fun for me. Can you guys hear? That's really loud back there. Okay, cool. Um, I had some cool opportunities, internships with the Discovery Channel. Uh, Daniel and I did some fun stuff for Heineken USA. We won an award doing a campaign for them. And I really got to see how creativity could be applied to uh, a, a major, a profession. By the time I was a senior, I discovered what branding was and realized that that was the path I wanted to go down because of the idea that branding is really all about ideas. It's all about concepts and the foundational elements that drive a campaign for a company or drive uh, a commercial or media. And I wanted to figure out how to work in branding. And I decided I was gonna leave Phoenix or leave Arizona after I graduated from U of A and get the hell out and go to California and work for a branding agency. That didn't happen. It was 2008 when the economy tanked and that was okay because I came back here and worked for an awesome, uh, a really awesome architecture firm called Smith Group and got to design proposals for them. And I really got to learn about graphic design and learn the skills in that aspect of creativity. I loved it. I got to spend more time with my family, uh, my grandma, who I made that rolling pin trophy for. I got to spend the last years of her life with her while I was here. And I called it my Phoenix 2.0 era. And in the back of my mind, I still wanted to get into branding. And that was something that I, I just knew I needed to do. There was a company in San Francisco called Landor Associates. And they were like, the original, the original agency that started branding. And so I was persistent, bugged them at least a couple times a year, let them know I was still here. And they finally gave me a job and uh, I moved to San Francisco in 2011, thinking that I'm out of Phoenix, this is gonna be awesome. San Francisco, I'm working for a branding agency and it ended up being not the case. It was actually not sunny there. So um, after like, I don't know, three days of being there in, in the uh, the cloudy, foggy San Francisco, I was like, what am I doing here? The, the job ended up not being what I thought it was going to be. I learned a lot. I learned the business of branding. I got to work on some really cool big clients. But the thing about working for a big company, which I'm sure a lot of you know, and a big agency is it's hard to see change happen. It's hard to see your creativity come to life for some of these brands. And so I had a hard time. I was struggling. And not only the weather, the job, it was just rough. So the one thing that was fascinating to me about being in the Bay Area and any, any port city is that they have these huge cargo ships going in and out of the Bay, bringing us our things. And I thought, okay, uh, how can I get on one of those ships? and go somewhere. So I did the research and I found a company, a, a, a travel agent out of New Zealand who was able to book passage for me and my partner at the time on a giant container ship. So on my 30th birthday, I was walking up the gangway of the CMA CGM Centaurus, which is a giant container ship that had, I think it held about either 2000 of these or 20,000. I'd have to go back and check. But I spent 21 days on the Pacific Ocean with no internet, a lot of books, a lot of journals, and basically cleared my brain. Um, it was incredible. If you have questions, because a lot of people usually do, ask me after. I didn't stay in one of those containers, but <laughs> it was incredible. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done. I, I still talk about it to this day. Um, but like I said, I did a lot of introspection, 
I did a lot of painting with one of these little Altoids tins. I'm sure you've seen some of them on Etsy, but this is my original one that I took on my trip. And super crazy. you can pass that around. And actually I have a giveaway at the end of my talk that might include a couple of those. Uh, but anyway, on that trip, I realized I needed to get out of San Francisco and made the decision to leave and move to San Diego three months later. And the moment I got into San Diego, guess what was shining? <laughs> yeah, the sun. I was immediately probably like 10 times happier just because of that. The sun was shining. It was warm. I found my people there. I got to work for two really incredible branding agencies, Myers Ball and Four Fin Creative. If you guys are on Zoom, shout out to you guys. I learned a lot. I made a lot of great friends. And San Diego was, I called it my spirit city for the six years I lived there. And it was there that I really got to explore my creativity a little bit more. Um, yes, I had great friends. I had a great job, but there was still something in me that needed to be explored creatively. Uh, I, going back to loving creating things for people, I also loved uh, sustainability as well. And so I started making postcards for friends, for my family. I'd send postcards to my family in Phoenix here. And I wanted to create some sort of stationary concept that would allow people to make a greeting card, maybe in a coffee shop, um, but actually make a card and send somebody some love. And I came across this obnoxiously green 1971 postal Jeep on Craigslist. A guy in LA was selling it. And I knew I have to do something with this. Obviously this isn't, this isn't the Jeep, um, but my friends made me this Lego replica of a Wrangler. But essentially I came up with this concept where I would drive up to different markets, different events, Balboa Park. And I would, I'm gonna put the mic down for one second. I would park and I'd open up the back. The back would come apart, table would come out and you could make a greeting card out of the back of the Jeep using recycled stamps that I have in the back that I had you guys use at the beginning to design your greeting cards that we're gonna come back to, um, or postcards I should say. And you could come up, make a postcard, create it, and then I would mail it to anybody you wanted to mail it to. That was part of part of the, the offer. And it was awesome. I got to meet so many people. I made journals. I would sell these journals. And San Diego is teeming with craft beer boxes. And so I would cut those down and use the recycled cardboard for the cards. And it was so much fun. I met amazing people. I actually got to set up at Creative Mornings for their Valentine's Day talk and people came up and got to make Valentine's and it was so rad. It was the coolest thing. It was doing this was, it, it, I felt like I knew what I was supposed to be doing. Has anybody had that feeling where you're just like, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Anybody? Yeah. Okay, cool. And it was the first time in my life that I felt that, you know, I had jobs and, and all of that, but finally getting to express myself in a way that was helping other people express their creativity was, it just felt really good. And I felt very fulfilled and I loved it. And then 2020 happened. Yay. Yeah. yeah. I know that some people thrived during COVID. I don't know how, but I wasn't one of those people who thrived and pivoted and figured out how to make it work for me. Um, obviously, I couldn't go and set up and have people be using these stamps and touching things. Like nobody wanted to touch anything in 2020. So I wasn't going out and meeting people and setting up uh, my business, which was called From, by the way. I didn't mention that. Uh, and so I felt really sad that I couldn't express that creativity. I was working from home. It was just depressing. I mean, honestly, I know people want to hear like positive things, but I was really depressed and went through a really bad tailspin, excuse me, uh, became depressed, isolated. And I think a lot of people can agree. It was just a shitty time. And 
I think for me, the, the hardest part was losing my, my mojo of inspiration, losing my imagination. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to do this even. I didn't want to pivot and figure out a way to make it work. I just didn't care. And so around 2021, made the decision to leave San Diego. I just needed a drastic change, needed something that was going to help me get the spark back, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate as creatives. When you lose the motivation, the inspiration, it's hard to find again. And if if you have found that and have ways of finding it again, I would I'd love to talk to you. Um, but I made the brilliant decision to quit my job, leave San Diego, leave my friends, uh, sell my car, not that car, I kept that for a while, sell my, my regular car and move down to Baja, Mexico, which was awesome, except I uh, <laughs> was going through a, a pretty bad breakup and basically my life just imploded in front of my face and it was, it was shitty. Uh, so I didn't know where else to go. I actually did know where else to go. I knew that the one place that I could come back to that I would feel safe in was here in Phoenix. So I drove all night, landed at Daniel's house, slept on his couch for about a week and just felt sorry for myself. Um, but knew that I was safe. My family, my friends, uh, you guys saved me. So thank you for that. But I still didn't have the spark. And it has taken me till now, even finding that spark again. But I knew that the only way I could find my motivation and my creativity and my imagination was getting those anchors back that I had in San Diego. One of those anchors being my community. So important. Like I said, Creative Mornings was such an important piece of what I did out there. And so I started coming to Creative Mornings here and immediately met some really great people, Peter and Gretchen, Yvonne, I met Claudia. I met so many of you here. And in addition to that, Daniel and I decided to start Stray Native. And like I said, I needed community. And so selfishly, I was like, we need to start something. We need to get people together. I need friends. And so we started Stray Native about a year ago. We hold four, four events a year where we get together and we do something creative in Phoenix that is centered around curiosity, culture, and creativity. And uh, I'm going to pass around a little booklet. If you're at all curious, we send emails out with our events. So this little booklet is for you to sign up with your name and email. If you're interested, we'll send you more information. But we're still learning as we go. It's a, it's a new club. We're small right now. But we want to get cool people in Phoenix. We're doing great things for our city and making a better Phoenix because those are the people I want to be around. People who are making this city better. This is our membership card, by the way, that we made out of recycled wood. And uh, Yvonne back there helped us do the woodworking. And so if you join Stray Native, you will get one of these cards. Um, yeah. So if we fast forward to today, I have a company. It's actually the domain I, I purchased last year called Wild Ideas Work for a personal website that I put together. And it really allowed me to originally share some of the ideas, the crazy things I've done, the container ship trip, starting from um, a few other things that I've done, put that on a, a website and also share the work that I've done professionally for the branding agencies. But now it's, it's evolving. Today, I wanna figure out a way to inspire other people to live out their ideas. I think there's definitely a need for that. And I figured out that my superpower is helping people find their imagination and helping people discover the ideas that will help them on their journey. And so I always thought that if I gave a, a talk at Creative Mornings, I'd have my shit together. I'd be like this big deal person. 
uh, <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm not, I mean, I, I think I'm a big deal kind of, but <laughs> I'm okay. But um, at least some of my friends and family do. But all that to say is that I'm here for a reason and it's, it's to share some of the cool ideas that have made me who I am and the ideas that are born from the imagination, the native ideas that have taken me across the ocean, that have taken me on journeys, relationships, friendships, and I'm really grateful for that. And so I thought it'd be really fun. You all got a postcard when you came in here today that you were supposed to decorate. And if you were, maybe you were decorating it while we were sitting here, that's awesome. Um, but I wanna make sure everybody has a pen because we're gonna do an activity for the next few minutes that involve your ideas. So does everybody have a postcard? And for those of you on Zoom, like I said, just use a piece of paper and a pen. Everybody has a, a postcard? Awesome. Okay, so on the other side of your awesome decorations and on the front it says, what, the wild west of your mind? That was kind of my fun, creative way of bringing Phoenix into the mix and the west and being here. Uh, and you, utilizing some of the stamps that I had with my stationary business in the back. But on the other side, what I want you to do, I want you to spend about two or three minutes seriously thinking about an idea that you've had percolating in your brain. It doesn't have to be professional. It does. I mean, it doesn't, it can be professional. It can be personal, but something that you've had floating around that you're like, ah, oh, this would be so cool to do. Maybe it's a trip. Maybe it's something you want to make. Maybe it's something you want to cook. Maybe it's an organization you want to start. Maybe it's some way of helping people. But seriously, like, think for a few minutes. I'm not going to yammer on, but I'm going to turn the mic off and write down an idea that you have. Because the first step in making an idea reality is writing it down. So let's start there. Like I said, we get two minutes two to three minutes. People have been asking about the jacket. The jacket, can anybody, well, it already says Fiesta Bowl, so you already know. But um, I don't know if this is still the Fiesta Bowl's branding, but this was the, the jacket that my grandpa wore when he was chairman of the Fiesta Bowl back in the late 70s. And he is on Zoom right now, listening in. He lives here with my grandma. And uh, I asked him if I could wear something of his that was Phoenix related. And so he immediately pulled this out. It had wine stains on it because I know that he definitely had good times. He still has good times, but it, I had to do some washing to get the red wine stains out of this jacket. But I love this logo, the sun. It's so rad. And it's actually an original champion brand. So it's cool. It has the old champion logo. If you want to see it, come grab my, the nape of my neck after the talk, but I just feel really proud wearing it. And, uh, I feel honored that he let me wear it because he is a badass. And I forgot to mention that my parents came out here in the fifties with my grandparents, both sets from Illinois. And so my sister and I are, are true Venetian Phoenix natives. My parents aren't, that's okay. Um, anyway. Okay. Ideas. Can I get three volunteers who aren't afraid to come up and share their idea with the with the crew. Brian, all right, we got one. We're not gonna steal your idea, okay? <laughs> Let's promise each other we're not gonna steal each other's idea. Raquel, I think you want to. All right, we need one more. Come on up. All right, Peter, you come up too. All right, Brian. You want to yeah. share your idea? Yeah. I have this grandiose idea. Don't know if it'll ever happen to make this 501c3. And open three more chapters. Say that again. Louder. And open three more chapters. Yes. Of creative warnings. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Wait. Oh. Yeah. You get a prize. I get a prize? Yeah. How does the Wonder Box? 
you get, well, I'm going to pick it out for you. So I brought some paint kits and no some journals from my stationary business. <laughs> and so I'm going to give you, you want the paint kit or the journal? The journal. Yeah. Take it. You're All right. He's got a Budweiser journal now. Thank you, Brian. All right, Raquel. thought it was the edibles. Yeah. The <laughs> they are in edibles containers. Reuse. Reuse. Um, mine is, I want to create a community of tech professionals that travel together. I want to curate trips domestically and internationally where we grow, connect, and become inspired together. Oh, you have that one. Awesome. All right. Come here. You get to pick. Oh. Well, you can you can pick out of the, the magic box. You want a paint kit or a journal? A journal. All right. If they are Girl Scout themed. Thin mints or s'mores. Ten minutes. All right. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you, Rico. I'll come back to you. All right. Oh, and can you say your name? Yeah. Um, I'm Stacy Fisher. Hi, Stacy. I had excuse me. I had stamped mine with Howie at the top, so I wrote Howie ideas. <laughs> the first step is writing it down. Just a nice reminder for all of us. So, which of the thousands do I want to write about in this minute? This is for the people on Zoom. Hello, Zoom. Um, an off-grid airstream or cabin or someplace to escape, to write and read, listen to records, and snuggle and just escape. Destination unknown. Little shout out to Anthony Bourdain, but needed. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Well, to get you started on your trip, yeah. Can I do paint kit? And if I could do the Caminos. You can have the Caminos. All right. Very on brand for me. There you go. All right, Peter. Hi, thank you. Um, I am Peter. I am a graphic designer. I'm not supposed to introduce ourselves like that. No, but that's great. Anyways, um, my idea is Gretchen and I have a van that we like to travel in when time permitting. But my goal is to set it up and either give art away, paint paintings I would make, and, and maybe Gretchen also. She's pretty talented. Um, and just set up in, in the roadside and people drive by and not to make money, but just to kind of share uh inspiration and uh get myself out of my own space and do some work that i enjoy I and that. give it and share it so that's yeah. our that's our band and that's our paintings awesome yes. thank you all right we got paint kit paint kit there you go thank you okay i have two thank you i have two things left if we if we have two people who want to share come on up come on up All right, say your name and share your idea. Hi, I'm Ilsa Manning and kind of one of the things I've learned in myself, I love being creative, but I also kind of take the lead from other people um, with my ideas. And so one of the things I'd really like to create my own local version of the Guilty Feminist podcast, if anybody knows that, and uh, where I host a monthly kind of nightclub style event, highlighting a local woman or two, and just focusing on empowering women so women leave feeling fabulously fierce and believing in themselves. Yes, love that. Thank you. You want a pink pink kit or a journal? Pink. There you go. All right. Hi. Hi. I'm Alicia. I'm horrible at being in front of people, but this felt relevant to the topic. So I have um, this idea that I've been putting together for about six months now. And I actually want to start a meadery and a cidery. And the branding aspect literally came to me Monday or Tuesday of this week. So here I am. And speaking of native stuff, it's very, what's the word? Uh, there's an aspect of uh, lineage and what have you here. So anyways, I'm going to be working on a concept. And I bought the domain this week Yes. called Oshun's Meadery, which is part of the African diaspora. And she is a goddess of fertility, and her symbology is around honey and bees and mead and all of these things. And so it just felt, and everything is working really well together. Um, ideally, I will be doing this in Portugal with my friend's farm. So yes. we'll see. Awesome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Here you go. Yeah. Awesome. That was really cool. I urge you to mail those postcards. Mail it to yourself. Um, mail it to a friend. Mail it to me. I'll give you my address if you want it. Uh, but yeah, I the last thing I'll say is ideas and my imagination have saved me over the years, over and over and over again. 
and they can do that for you too. They can do so many things. Um, so I'll leave you with that and open it up to questions. Thank you. Thank you.